Recently for work, I was tasked with turning a Dell Optiplex into a CAD machine, which prompted my office to purchase an AMD Fire Pro W4300 and an upgrade from 8 to 16 gigabytes of RAM. The W4300 is a professional workstation graphics card with 4 gigs of VRAM, but for that price, we could have gotten a new RX card with more VRAM. So why did we go with the workstation card, and what makes them so special for productivity tasks? Find out here on East Coast Tech. I know the graphics card market is a bit of a hot mess right now with all the Ethereum mining, but I'll try to compensate for that when we talk pricing for some of the graphics cards in today's video. On the mainstream consumer end for graphics cards, we have GeForce for NVIDIA and the R series for AMD. Fresh out on the market are the RX V cards, but I'll skip them for now since they're so new. Mainstream graphics cards are designed solely for the purpose of generating higher render rates in games to provide the user with the fastest and smoothest experience, while workstation cards forgo performance in numbers in an effort to increase accuracy and compute performance. But that's not to say you can't game on a workstation card or that you couldn't go and do some 3D modeling on the side with an RX 580. In a professional setting, it's definitely better to be using a card that was specifically tuned for use in programs that you use while you're working. These differences are often brought about in the form of software drivers. Software drivers on the mainstream end are configured to deliver maximum performance in games, whereas workstation cards are designed to deliver maximum performance in specific programs like AutoCAD or SolidWorks. Workstation graphics cards are also often made from higher grade materials and are put through a much more stricter quality control process to further promote their precision and uniformity. Mainstream graphics processors differ greatly and can cause lapses in performance when under workstation loads. Workstation graphics chips are often binned or specifically sought out to promote uniformity. On the subject of price, on the mainstream side, workstation cards with sp similar specs to their gaming equivalents are almost always leagues more expensive for what you pay for. Take the RX 580. It's a decent performing mainstream graphics card with 8 gigs of VRAM and a 1385 average core clock speed. Cheapest you can buy these new is about 350 bucks, which is totally due to miners. The AMD equivalent, and I use the term loosely, <laughs> is the FirePro W7100, which also boasts 8 gigs of VRAM, but doesn't distinctly advertise clock speeds. Product information for this card emphasizes compute specs like total number of stream processors and such. This card costs $200 more than its mainstream counterpart. The trend follows suit on the Nvidia side as well. Average price on a 1050 Ti is about $160, with the cheapest Nvidia equivalent being almost $200 more for the workstation version at about $330. Not much to say about that. I mean, I guess you can go middle ground and buy an NVIDIA Titan X, which performs good, you know, on either workload. Um, there was actually a recent driver update, which kind of, you know, provoked a bit of the community with increases in performance with Maya and SolidWorks and other workstation tasks, which was probably bought out by AMD's recent Vega release. But I also did, I did say I wasn't going to talk about that. The question I have here is... If driver updates were able to deliver such an incredible increase in performance, couldn't mainstream cards perform better at workstation tasks with a similar driver update? Probably, but then nobody would be buying workstation cards, would they? Personally, I like the Titan X in that regard since it wants to deliver the best of both worlds. But at $1,200, you could buy a workstation card and a decent mainstream card and probably still have some money left over. You would also, however, be building two systems. Also, let's not forget that there are still more expensive cars than the Titan X on the workstation side, like the NVIDIA Quadro K6000, which comes in at a whopping 2300 bucks. Not exactly sure how one could justify that price, but I suppose there's a market for everything these days. Ultimately, it comes down to personal needs. If you're only gaming or only doing professional CAD or 3D modeling, then a mainstream card or a workstation card for those tasks would suit you just fine. But if you're trying to do both, then I recommend spending the extra dollar. 
Thanks for watching guys. Give this video a like if you loved it. Get subscribed if you want to see more content from me. There will also be links to products talked about down in the video's description. This was Andrew with East Coast Tech and I'll see you next time.